When my sister found our mother's cheat sheet, I knew we'd been had. My whole life, my mother had told me and everybody else in the world that she was born in 1937 in Kibbutz Hefzibah in British Mandate Palestine, and there was no reason that I would have doubted her. She and I had a very close relationship. Um, when she was youthful, she was extremely dynamic. When she got older, she got even more dynamic. She was an ordinary and difficult person uh, for some people, but generally she had a lot of energy. And even when she was really, really old, she never looked her age. She had a very sort of exotic accent, a combination of Italian, German, British, English, American, uh, all, Hebrew, all mixed together. Nobody could figure her out, but she was the kind of person that, uh, you know, she was not a secretive person. But about, uh, I guess, 2014, so uh, seven years ago, we started to suspect that there was a story and that she had fabricated her age. And it happened like this. So 2014, we went to visit family in Israel. Uh, Janice, who was a, my, the storyteller two storytellers ago, is my wife. She was there with me. Our two kids were there, my sister Kitty, her daughter, and my mother. We all went. And we went to Kibbutz Hefzibah, which is where my mother was born. And we were visiting my Uncle Hillel and my Aunt Gazelle in their tiny little kibbutz apartment. And the night we got there, Gazelle was very excited. She said, uh, I have this passport that belonged to your grandmother. I want to show it to you. So she hands me this old British mandate passport and has got a beautiful picture of my grandmother, who I sort of barely remembered from uh, many years ago. And underneath it is a picture of my aunt Rivka, my mother's sister, and then my mother Milka underneath. And I call my mother over. I say, Ima, come over. I want to show you this passport that Gazelle just found. And uh, I noticed as my mother was approaching, I look at the page on the passport, and I saw that the, the 1937, the year that was supposed to be indicated there, it didn't say 1937. It said 1930 something. And I didn't have a chance to see what it was because my mother snatched it out of my hand very quickly. Remember, I said she could be an ordinary person. Uh, and she put on this show of being emotionally uh, upset, verklempt, whatever. It was too much for her. She didn't want to look at this beautiful picture of her departed mother. And she hid the passport somewhere. I couldn't find it. I looked for it like for a couple of days. I don't know where she stashed it. A few days later, we went to Tel Aviv to visit my Aunt Rivka uh, in her apartment. I hadn't seen her since I was 13. And um, she was excited to see me. She had never met Janice. She hadn't met our kids before. My mother was there. She probably hadn't seen my mother in five or 10 years. She's got this big, beaming smile on her face. Now, Rivka doesn't speak any English at all. But, uh, and I don't understand very much Hebrew. But what I did pick up on, she's pointing at my mother like this. And she says the word shmonim, which means 80. But she's saying she's 80 something. I don't know what it was, 80 something. Now, my mother was supposed to be 77 in, in 2014. Um, so immediately, my mother pulls the same thing that she did when we were at my uncle and aunt's house. She, she very rudely interrupts her sister. She says, uh, you know, shuck it to her. And then to me, she says, oh, don't listen to you, you, this crazy old lady, Michael. Don't listen to anything she's saying. She shuts it down. It's over. I don't know what to think. A few years later, uh, Janice and I are visiting my cousin, Peppy. And um, Pepe hadn't seen us for a while. We get to her apartment in uh, London, Ontario. And she says, Michael and Janice, I've been wanting to tell you for years. I haven't had the chance, because you're always here with your mother. But uh, your mother is much older than she ever told you she was. Uh, and I can prove it, because I remember. So she told me a story. Pepe grew up in this little town in Czechoslovakia, which is where my grandparents came from. They immigrated to Palestine in the 20s. Pepe stayed in that town. And she said that in 1937 or 38, when my mother was supposed to have been born, my mother and her sister Rivka and their mother showed up. My mother, a very bratty seven-year-old, showed up in this village in Czechoslovakia and had, I don't know, a two-week, three-week, two-month, I don't know how long of a visit it was. This story blew me away for two reasons. First, obviously, my mother wasn't born in 1937 if she was a seven-year-old in 1937. But more important, it told me that my mother and her sister and their mother had traveled out of a safe place, which was Palestine, to Europe about a year or two before Hitler took power. Now, everybody in that village 
who stayed was killed by Hitler. And the only reason Pepe survived was that her parents sent her to England about a year after this visit had taken place. My mother had never told me this story. She never told me that she met her grandparents. She never said anything about going to Czechoslovakia before the war, anything like that. So I was mystified. I couldn't understand what, what that was all about. Well, about a little bit less than a year ago when my mother was ailing and uh, you know, was really losing it, we were visiting her. It was about a month before she passed away. And uh, my sister found a picture of my mother and her sister. And it looked as though it looked like it, uh, what was written on the back, it seemed like maybe it had been taken on that trip to Czechoslovakia. And I showed it to my mother because she was so so much in a state of dementia. I thought, well, she won't react to me. She'll you know she'll take it in. She won't yell at me or anything. So I showed her the picture and I said, you know, this looks like the time when you visited your grandparents. And she sort of vaguely, you know, she had a smile on her face, yes. And she you know, but she was not lucid enough for me to really get a sense of what this trip was like. Um, so I never found out. What really confirmed everything was the cheat sheet. And that is something my sister found about two or three days before my mother died. It was a piece of hotel, like a hotel memo pad. And on the left-hand side was a list of years, 1940, 1950, 1960, and so on. And the right-hand side was the column that had the year that she was supposed to be. So for 1940, it said three. And then next to it, it said 10. And for 1950, it said 13, and then it also said 20. So we knew that you know, somewhere along the line, she had to you know, sort of contrive something for herself to keep track of the stories she was telling people. But we never found out why. No idea why she would have fabricated this thing. She was 90 when she died. She was supposed to be 83. Um, but I will say that it did give us something to chuckle about uh, when we were feeling our sadness at her passing last April. Thank you.